Hi, this is Jonesy with Jetters Northwest, and today's Get Jetting subject is rotating nozzles, the different types and their capabilities, how they can help you in your service jetting. So first, real simple, what's the difference between a rotating nozzle and what I would call a standard static nozzle? Um, well, here's an example of just a classic penetrator static nozzle. It's got six rear jets, and those rear jets are not being rotated or moved in any way. They're just a stream of water. So, which is great for general cleaning and a straight stream of water actually has highest impact. We'll get to that. But as you're spraying that water out, obviously there are gaps in between. When we take and can rotate those jets, now we can get a 360 degree coverage of the pipe and leave no gaps in the cleaning. And this also gives us peeling and cutting capabilities depending on the type of nozzle that you're using. So peeling and cutting in service jetting is really, really important. Probably the number one, number two things we always get asked about is, you know, I need to cut out grease, I need to cut out roots. Uh, but it goes beyond that. Of course, you got scale. Um, you could have heavy silts down in a storm line or a culvert. And these kind of things, a static nozzle might graze over the top of, might punch through, but they don't necessarily peel them out or cut them out or tear them out. That's what the purpose of some of these different rotating nozzles can definitely do. Okay, for the different types, let's start with the oldest type, which is the high-speed spinner. Basically, you take something like this, and you've got what we call a center barrel in the middle there that is rotating, and a couple of jets coming out at that, or maybe more. So as that center barrel spins, naturally, those water jets are spinning. These high-speed ones um, are real distinct from the sound they make. You know, it's very high-pitched. I mean, I can't even get as high pitches they make because of their super fast rotation. Um, and that might sound good, but they actually, the faster you rotate a jet, the less impact it has. And it can actually bend the water jet as it's kind of being dragged across the pipe wall. But they're inexpensive. So these are great for like your soft grease, soft sludge. Um, and there's different grades to these. Start with just, this is a real basic rotating barrel spinner. Frankly, it's less expensive. Uh, the rotating barrel is made of brass, which isn't the greatest. Anytime you have an orifice, water jet orifice coming out of brass, brass is really soft and they just don't last. Those water jets um, will erode into that. But this is really inexpensive. Um, the knock on these is they leak a lot. Okay, a rotating barrel spinner is not like internally oiled. Actual water comes through there and leaks out in this point right here to create lubrication. So you can see in the video here how much leakage is coming out in the, toward the front of that nozzle. This uh, cheapie here probably loses about a third of its water, close to a third of its water to leakage. To kind of underscore that, if you had like a 10 gallon a minute jetter, you know, actual water coming out the orifices to do cleaning could be as low as like six and a half you know, gallons a minute or so. The rest of it is just lost. So when you get into more of a precision drilled unit, you hear the, the center barrel is stainless steel. You can just feel the tolerances are tighter. Um, and these can be drilled specific to the gallons per minute and the PSI of your jetter. Uh, and by the way, all of these operate better with the more GPM you give them. I mean, if you've got like a little two gallon a minute jetter, yes, you can use some spinners for that. If you've got a little four gallon a minute, uh, but when you start getting up in the eight gallons a minute higher for service jetting, you know, then these really, that really helps. Um, but taking a step further, this is still a high speed spinner. And again, that high speed wine, it doesn't have a lot of cutting action or peeling action. The next step from there, is what we call a controlled speed center barrel rotator. And what we have here is we have jets to spray out there and um, to do the cleaning, but also have some jets in there to break it. What do I mean break it? Slow it down. It's just been determined that if you slow down a water jet, it has more chance to dig. And these we call grease hogs, uh, especially these little ones for eighth inch and quarter inch, really do a nice job in those small kitchen lines. And they're not like screaming, they sound more like a bzzz, um, 
which does a real nice job on grease and some of the light scale and those things you run into in those indoor lines. Okay, the next level of rotating nozzles are what we call cutter type nozzles. And these are what you would use for cutting out tree roots, um, cutting out the hardened grease. You know, sometimes you might run a high speed spinner down the line and you pull the uh, nozzle out, you put the camera in, you see that nice grease log, you've turned it white because you cleaned it up real well, but you didn't cut it out. A cutter nozzle would be the nozzle to tackle those type of grease situations. Then you get the hard scale uh, that needs some impact from this type of nozzle, or if you're just dredging up like silt or earth out of the bottom of, you know, a particular, say like a larger pipe, like a storm line. Now, in this section, we're not going to talk about rotating chain cutters. That's really kind of a different subject. Um, I'm talking about nozzles that use the water jets to do the cleaning and the cutting. And they kind of break down into whole head rotating nozzles, such as Warthog, Bulldog, or popular ones, or internal rotation nozzles, such as Root Ranger, Reaper. Okay, next, let's get into these whole head rotating type of nozzles. Let's start with the Warthog. It's probably the most well-known, most classic. And as you can see, the entire head rotates. Now there's not any kind of a motor or anything that makes this happen. It's just the water jet is angled enough that it thrusts the head into a rotating motion. And it's at a controlled speed. Uh, take the Warthog for example, it has oil in there to slow it down and to lubricate it, lubricate it but mostly to slow it down. So when it's running right, it sounds kind of like a helicopter. You know, like tick, 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 tick. Uh, By contrast, the end's Bulldog, you can see its head rotating there. And it sound, it's a little faster. It sounds more like a bzzz. Um, they could have a front jet installed. They could not have a front jet installed. It's up to you. Um, but typically there is a front jet installed. And let's start there. That front jet is going to be offset. So it's going to have some coring action. As it's rotating along. Tick, 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 tick. As you're approaching, say, a rip mass or something like that, it's going to start coring into it. And by the way, when you do this, it works better. Don't just bury yourself into the mass back up a little bit and let that coring jet core. And as it works its way through, then as soon as the rear jets get to it, get to the, the roots or whatever is the blockage, then those rear jets really, they put out more water than the front jet and they start really tearing into it. And, and they're not so much maybe sawing a hole in the roots so much as they're just almost grabbing hold of them and ripping them out. As you work these um, type of nozzles back and forth then you can finish off those roots and of course, that's the way you would approach the grease. You get the grease that's too hard for your spinner nozzle, even if it was a controlled speed spinner grease hog type, maybe that grease was too hard. This type of nozzle with its kind of real penetrating action of their very sharp water jets on these. You know, these are replaceable orifices, precision drilled or precision machine to create a very sharp water jet. Now that jet can cut into that harder grease and if using it for the descaling, it's gonna have more penetration to get that scale off of the pipe wall. And again, if you're dealing with, uh, say like storm lines or culverts that are quarter half, a third full of say like silt or dirt or earth, you take something like this, especially a little slower rotation, and it starts to dredge that stuff up, break it up, so then you can follow it with your flusher nozzle and you'll sweep that line clean. All right, the last type of rotating nozzle we're gonna cover is the internal rotation type of nozzle. And you've heard maybe some of these names, the, the Bora, um, the Roto Drill, the Root Ranger series, and of course the brand new, very new and super effective Reaper. What makes these different? Well, as you look at one of these, you don't see any rotating aspects on the outside and that's because it's all happening internally. If you took this apart, you would get in to see that their orifice that's shooting the water is on a rotor and they put a seat in the front of that nozzle, front of the body right in here, so that as water hits this rotor, it swings it around like this. So coming out of the nozzles where you see the rotation. Um, this makes for some very intense cutting power. Uh, this was learned in the pressure washer industry years and years ago. If you see, ever seen a turbo nozzle on a pressure washer, it's like zzzz, you know, and cut through a piece of plywood. Well, the first attempts at some of those rotating nozzles for the pressure washing industry were more like a nozzle that just kind of went like this, and they just didn't work well at all. As somebody invented this technology of 
a rotor up against a seat, it dramatically changed the cutting action, the penetrating action of those nozzles. So as you look at the video here, you can see that that rotating jet has tremendous cutting action. So these are wonderful, especially when you got to work downstream. Um, in hydrojetting, you know, we love to jet upstream so we can pull whatever we're jetting back in the direction it naturally wants to flow, you know, to a catch basin, to an interceptor, uh, manhole, or just, you know, toward the city sewer. But so often we got to jet downstream. And when you have that forward rotating cutting cone, um, it can really attack a root mass right up front. Um, give an example of this, I had a customer when the Reaper first came out, um, they had about 40 feet of pretty compacted roots in a four inch pipe. And he actually hacked out a section for us. You might have heard us talk about this in another video. Hacked out about a three foot section and showed it to us and said, you know, he didn't have any kind of downstream access to go upstream and go after it. He had to kind of basically go in each direction before he cut it out. He said, well, I recommend you try this forward cutter, the Reaper. Um, he expected to be on the job for the better part of a day, and he had a 12 gallon a minute jetter. Um, he was done in, I think, about 40 minutes, and going about 20 feet each direction. So that was pretty dramatic, and that got our eyes open to the potential of these nozzles. Now we'll come back to the, the Reaper and Bora type forward cutters in just a second, but among these internal rotation nozzles, there's a couple of oddballs here worth covering. Um, the Root Ranger series was it's been out for quite a while, a lot of people know it. And this particular one is a double root ranger where we have a coring cone jet out the front and a coring cone jet out the back. Um, this obviously is pretty darn long. Um, and with root rangers, the hose has to come into the side. So it's not necessarily centering itself. It could be sitting wrong in the pipe and you might have to loop your hose and twist it to get it a full coverage on the pipe. Um, but one little funny thing you do with these, sometimes you can aim them around a corner because they tend to want to do this. Um, and the most common ones of these don't have a forward. Um, for jetters that do like four or five gallons a minute, it's maybe the only root cutter option. It's slow going, but if you can punch through a mass, then the back jet at four or five gallons a minute can do some cutting for you. So it's a little bit of an odd one, but it's worth covering. Uh, a newer one that we developed recently, we call this a super sweeper. This has two high flow cone jets out the back and it's heavy. It's made to lay down on the bottom of you know, a larger pipe and again, just dredge for you. But also, since it's a cone jet that can scoop, move that material back. Go for a culver, some sort of large line um, where you gotta really dredge that stuff up. So let's get back to these nozzles here. Obviously you see a big size difference here. And the Reaper, especially in the last couple of years really taken the market by storm because of its front cutting capability. So what makes it different? Um, it's one of the only or the few internal nozzles that uses a tungsten carbide insert. Now the company that makes those Hydroflex, I mean they have a lot of experience in this type of um, this type of cutting orifice. Um, and not always for cutting. They do low pressure ones for like car wash to clean tires. But uh, they really got well known for their hydro excavating nozzles for digging holes with vacuum and uh, high pressure water jet. But with the tungsten carbide, it gives some advantages. The extremely polished, clean surfaces here as it's rotating. Uh, it doesn't bounce around really at all. Um, they can handle a lot of impact. With the ceramic types, over time, these have to stay loose, by the way, for them to move fast. So they aren't like tight in there. They're, and every time you fire it with pressure, they slap a little bit. Eventually these can chip and they have a little more drag. They're just not as smooth in their action as the carbide. So the water jet coming out of the front of this Reaper is extremely sharp and extremely true in its, let's call it concentricness. All right, so um, some other advantages of internal rotation nozzles. Um, there's no, rotating element that's going to drag on the pipe anywhere. You don't have any physical drag that could slow the rotation down or just wear out. Um, <clears throat> also, they're very easy to disassemble in service. They're just two-part nozzles. You can access these internal parts really quickly. 
Uh, but one cleaning advantage that these have also is that that forward cone, we call it, um, is wonderful for pushing. Um, before the Reaper even came out, when I first heard about these types, uh, one of my customers, I kind of blew it off, like, yeah, it's a pretty nice cutter, but I really like the Warthog and, and the Bulldog and some of these others. He says, well, these things are terrific for cleaning grease downstream. I said, what do you mean? And, he, and as soon as he explained it to me, I realized, you know, this cone out the front can really peel grease and just push it away from the building. Um, then when the tungsten carbide type come in like the Reaper, they can really, really cut. They've really been a game changer. So that is quite an array of different types of rotating nozzles. And we get asked all the time, well, what do you recommend? Well, I really don't think of any one of them being an end-all, be-all. They're all different tools to have in your bag, just like you'd have different heads maybe on your cable machine or your flex shaft, um, or different heads on different pieces of equipment. They have different jobs, and if you think of nozzles logically, and we actually talk about nozzle logic a lot, or if you can look at a nozzle, see where the orifices come out, where the water's coming out, do they rotate, how do they rotate, do they not rotate at all? You can think about how to apply them best. Let's kind of take this front to back for a second, starting back where we started with this um, inexpensive one from the pressure wash industry. It leaks a lot, doesn't have a lot of impact. I just don't recommend it. Um, so a more basic high-speed spinner. Uh, these are, by the way, included with every one of our Eagle or Brute jetters. And a nice nozzle for soft, sloppy grease, um, septic sludge, stuff like that. It's not going to have a lot of cutting power, but pretty inexpensive for what it can do for you. But moving on, um, we do these a lot for restaurant grease and whatnot, smaller lines, the controlled speed spinner. And these are more precision made. Like I said, this is particular one is an ends. And it can, it's a lower, slower rotation, so it sounds like zzz, to go in there and, and peel out some of that hardened grease. And they're available in bigger sizes too. And then stepping up to the cutter type of nozzles, the whole head rotators um, are going to have coring action. They're going to have root cutting action. Um, but they're going to be able to hit the pipe wall harder because they have these rotating rear jets. So they're going to scour the pipe harder, take out the heavy grease that's built up on the pipe wall, descale. Um, if you have a larger jetter where you're going manhole to manhole on those types, it's better for that. It's, it's better for going upstream and pulling material back to you. But in that downstream mode, or anytime you just want to attack a blockage, a forward cone cutter type of nozzle like the Reaper is going to be a great blockage buster. If you've got to build up a root stop flow or that's really inhibiting flow, go after it, blast that out of the way. And again, if uh, you've got a grease line and you're working from inside the building toward the street, a lot of times that forward cone can just peel that grease all the way out and just push it out to the street. And lastly, there's kind of a new application in the business, newer, where a lot of guys using flex shaft units um, are leaving a lot of scale down at the bottom of the pipe and it just needs to be kind of shoveled out. Again, a lot of that often has to happen working downstream from the building toward the street. And this type of nozzle has that cone which can scoop that up and move it along. So there you have it. That's kind of an array of the different applications that you can use rotating nozzles for, the different types. Um, one question we do get asked a lot is, you know, what's better, a warthog or a reaper? This is a very recent and common question. And I think I summed it up just a moment ago, working upstream and pulling back, warthog, working downstream and trying to attack reaper, which goes to show that they're both great tools to have in your bag amongst your uh, different groups of nozzles you have on your jetters. So, appreciate you watching. Again, this is Jonesy Jetters Northwest. Um, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, so we can keep these videos coming. And for now, get out there, get jetting.